Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the Conflict of Nick channel. I'm your host Nick. And today's video will be the third episode about tips and tricks that I use and recommend to others. The video will consist of tips, recommendations, and important information that any player can use to enhance their Conflict of Nations skills. I recommend watching my previous videos of the Tips and Tricks series as it will contain other important tips that will not be covered again in other Tips and Tricks videos. I hope you enjoy today's video. Our first tip in today's video, how to stack your units in the early game. When I say the early game, I'm referring to the first few days, because this is largely when you will be using your starting units, which consists of motorized infantry, 1-3 to three recon vehicles, 1 towed artillery piece, and a fighter jet. Many players will make the mistake of not properly stacking their units because they send them individually. However, I will tell you how to make these starting units a formidable early game stack. First, you want to be aware of the most efficient number of ground units in a land stack. This number is 10. With 10 being the largest number of units you can have in one stack, it means that 10 is the most effective amount to have in a stack as well. The reason for this is, if you have one large army stack attack an enemy, you will only take damage once from that enemy. For instance, if you have one big 10 stack with 200 hit points, and it attacks an enemy that is defending which deals 30 defense damage to your army, you will only take 30 damage once during the attack. However, if you attack the same enemy with 5 stacks of 2 units with 40 hit points, each stack individually will take 30 defense damage. So instead of taking 30 damage in total, you have now taken roughly 150 damage. That is an insanely large difference and one that will cost you a war in the early game 99% of the time. Now that you know why you need to have a 10 stack, the way you can attack your first enemy with a large stack is to send troops from your different cities to a city close to an enemy you want to attack. Then once your 10 stack is formed, you can crush your enemy's armies if they're split up. However. Be careful to not attack an enemy 10 stack with your 10 stack in the early game, because due to the defense bonus and your units being the same level and type, you will lose the fight to your army. So be mindful of how your enemy is playing, and use your army in the most effective way possible by being aware of where you send them and when to pull them back or when to defend. Our second tip in today's video, avoiding AI nations early game. Again, when I say the early game, I mean the first few days of the game. Another common mistake I see players make is when they decide how to allocate their troops by deciding which nations to attack. The mistake occurs when players decide to go for AI nations. Now, why is attacking AI nations bad, you ask? Isn't it just free resources? Well, in theory, yes, it's free resources. But when you first load up the game, attacking AI nations can actually lead to disastrous consequences. You see, AI nations will never attack you and will basically be static until someone attacks them. Once you attack an AI, you have to allocate at least 4 units to take the capital without losses. And even then you may lose a troop or two. Then you have to occupy the city with a troop to make sure it doesn't go rogue. Now think of the troops you're wasting, especially if you attack more than one AI nation, when in the beginning you need every troop you can muster to fend off and conquer real players. Knocking out real players early, especially ones bordering you, is important because it prevents a possible enemy from being able to attack you. Take the initiative to your bordering real player nations, as they offer more resources, at least 5 cities worth not including resource provinces, and more provinces which is an automatic cash and manpower buff. Not only that, but it puts space between your homeland and other future enemies. The more conquered land between an enemy and your homeland, the more land you can willingly lose if it is to your tactical advantage to retreat, regroup, and counterattack. The third tip in today's video. Use terrain buffs and debuffs to your advantage. It's no secret that certain units can perform better in certain terrain. Some common examples are tanks excelling in open fields or sand dunes, artillery doing more damage when in the mountains, or infantry doing more defense damage in cities and suburbs. This tip is fairly easy to imply as long as you possess the knowledge to use it. Start by taking a look at the units in game, specifically the ones you like to use the most, and go to the unit statistics where it shows performance in specific terrain. You will easily be able to see positive or negative percentages for units, where a positive means an increase in damage and a negative means a decrease in damage. When you're aware of this information, use it to your advantage in combat. 
An example would be, if you have an enemy who is using many tanks and armored vehicles, and your country has a lot of jungle terrain, it might be a good idea to have your forces defend against the enemy within those jungles, because the enemy's units will be way less lethal than they were in fields. Which in that case, you should retreat your units to more favorable terrain. If you can, always make sure you can utilize a terrain advantage, whether it be defensively or offensively. Another example will be if you have surface ships, destroyers in the system, and your enemy is using submarines. Wait for the enemy to send his submarines into shallow water, because they have much less hit points in shallow water and do less damage, specifically 25% less, making them much less dangerous when engaging them. Another common example I talk about a lot is having your artillery in mountains, because they get a 25% damage buff when in the mountains. When attacking and defending against adversaries, using terrain can be a game changer if you know what you're doing, and can maximize the efficiency of your units, or diminish the efficiency of your adversary's units. How you see terrain types in Conflict of Nations as well. First, you want to go to the settings tab in the bottom right as shown here, and click on the mountains tab. It is visible below toggle connections. The color coding of the terrain is as follows. Light green is open fields. Regular green or darker green is forest. The darkest shade of green is jungles. White is snow or tundra. Gray is mountains. Yellow is desert and red is cities. For the water, light blue is coastal water or shallow water and dark blue is ocean water or deep water. The fourth tip for today's video, utilize officers. This one is very simple and yet extremely valuable. Officers are units which can only be made one time, meaning you can't have more than one of the same officer at the same time, unless your officer dies, which then you can then rebuild. Officers are the only units in the game where your actual player level determines how high you can level them up. They have percentages that increase the attack and defense damage of units, and the speed of them as well. For example, the fixed wing, jet officer, only impacts the damage of planes, but increases the speed of both planes and helicopters. Another example is the tank commander having impacts on all armored and support vehicles, such as anti-aircraft or artillery or tanks, except for towed artillery, but also help to speed up infantry. In addition to officer boosting other units, they also boost themselves making officer stacks the best way to have a very punishing stack when it comes to damage. Now, the reason you want to use an officer is pretty much to maximize the efficiency of your main setup. If you're maining ships, it's not a bad idea to throw a naval officer in there to further maximize your ship's potential and make them even more deadly. Officers can surprise your adversaries and are very survivable as well, which means they are very tough nuts to crack. There's really no bad officer and they can each be used for their specific purposes. In the information tab of the officer, you will be able to see what units the officer affects to make sure you have the most efficient stack possible. The fifth and final tip for today's video, how to avoid debuffs when stacking units. For an easy to understand reference, this is how many units you can stack before you start to experience debuffs in the game. When creating a ground stack, aka land units, the maximum number of units you can have in one stack before experiencing debuffs is 10. 10 or below, preferably 10, does not increase damage or does not decrease damage or speed of your units. Anything above will decrease the efficiency the more units you have in the stack. For air and navy, the maximum number of planes and ships you can have in a stack is 5. Any more than that and you will experience debuffs. Overstacking is a common mistake made by players because they think bigger is better when in reality, 10 stacks are the most effective way to go. And to ensure maximum efficiency, have extra units behind your main stacks to replace falling units that you have lost in your larger stacks. Overstacking just increases the vulnerability of your units and decreases effectiveness. They're easier to outrun, they do very little damage, they move slow, they're easy targets for artillery, and especially aircraft, and also make sure to allocate your units in a way where you don't have all of your eggs in one basket, and be sure to have reserves to keep your stacks healthy. This will conclude our third tips and tricks video. I hope these five pieces of valuable information prove helpful to you in your future games. And if you are already aware of them, great. 
There will be many more of these tips and tricks videos to come, but for now I'll end the video here as to not make the video too long. If you found this video helpful or just enjoyed it in general, consider liking and subscribing, and feel free to leave a comment down below, I read them all. I wish you all a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Nick, over and out.